This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Closing nights are weird. Now granted, the last one I went to was in 2018 for this production of Curious Incident I directed, but the point still stands. It's really this bittersweet moment where you're super excited about what you've made, but then there's also this sadness of knowing that the run's coming to an end and you wanted to really keep going. After reopening on April 8th, 2022, Beetlejuice the musical was finally properly laid to rest. Seeing how important this musical's been to the journey of the channel as a whole, I couldn't not take you into its final night. So with that being said, hi, I'll be your guide. With Beetlejuice closing, it's safe to say that a lot of us are grieving and wanting to find an outlet for sharing our thoughts about how much this show means to us. So I made this 100% professional looking in memoriam page where people can share their photos with me, I'll upload them onto the site, and you can leave your comments about your own Beetlejuice story. And the way I made this website was with Squarespace. Squarespace is one of the easiest and best ways to make a professional looking website. I know that I was always really frustrated with how long it took and how bad the final result looked with websites, but thankfully with Squarespace, now I can make sexy stuff like this. If you're an artist, a creative, or even just you like to do taxes, this can be a great website to take your business or your passions to the next level. So head to squarespace.com slash wait in the wings and use code wait in the wings to receive 10% off your first website or domain. Let's head over to closing night. It was a surreal experience going back for Beetlejuice another time, because the first time I saw it was reopening less than a year ago. There was still that same nervous and excited anticipation, but there was also just this tinge of sadness to it as we all knew what was going to happen. It's like when you put old Yeller into the VCR and you know how it's gonna end, but you're just happy to be watching a movie in your English class. <laughs> But then you had so many people dressed up as characters in the show that they all started getting closer to each other. And then eventually this older Beetlejuice fan corralled everybody together in front of the theater to take one giant group photo and say goodbye Beetlejuice. I'm gonna do a lot of comparing this to reopening night because they're just two very different experiences, but I think it's interesting to look at them in perspective. With reopening night, you remember when I got there, I was kind of nervous because the place was empty. That was not the case this time around, as the cancellation line, the people who were waiting for the chance to get a ticket, it was expansive. And I think that just speaks to how badly everybody wanted to share this experience because they knew it was A, going to be something special, but then B, this is going to come up a lot, the show just means so much to people, where this is more than just a musical. It is a part of people's identities. I know it has been for me. <laughs> There's a dog. I'm allergic to dogs. <sighs> yes, the musical and the show itself is great, but the fans take it one step further, and nobody personified this better then someone that came up to me before the show started, their name was Sonny, and they flew from Australia to New York, 22 hour flight, just so they could see Beetlejuice the musical. They had this incredible burlesque Beetlejuice costume that they didn't need to do it, but they ripped it off <laughs> in a full display of pride for this show and then spent another 10 minutes trying to get it back on, but it was worth the bit. After the crowd really started to feel more filled out in that little hallway, then we could make our way inside. It was so packed that security had to actually stop people from coming up the escalator because there just wasn't room to move. And I walked around up top to just get a glimpse of how big this line was. 
I think one of my favorite things that I saw in line was someone had a Beetlejuice Build-A-Bear that had <laughs> Alex Brightman's voice inside of it. Let me see. I don't know if we'll be able to pick it up. Look, everybody, I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> so then after we got our Beetlejuice magnets and socks, we made our way into the theater and they probably held house for about 10 minutes because there were just so many people left behind. And it was this fast shuffle into the theater <laughs> because they're like, come on, we, we got to get this show on the road. And on the seats, they had these really cool closing night gifts, which is, it's this notebook. Nobody sat in the seat next to us. So I grabbed an extra one <laughs> and I'm going to give it away to somebody who comments below what Beetlejuice means to them. It's going to be very difficult, but I will try to pick the best one and then I'll send this off to them. So now let's paint the scene. We're in the theater and the music starts blaring and the place just, it erupted. Here's back-to-back -back footage. The first one is from reopening night and then the next one is from closing night. then lights up Alex Brightman with the newspaper. He says, holy crap. And then everybody just leapt to their feet and were clapping and cheering and yelling. And it effectively set the tone for what the rest of the night was going to be. So then the newspaper comes down and Alex Brightman's eyes are just beaming. And it was very human and really something to see. So of course they made a couple changes to the whole being dead thing. He said, last night in New York City, and instead of I do this bullshit like eight times a week, it was I did this bullshit eight times a week. Which it seems like little things, but really I think just how malleable that script is and how it, it really leans into the no one performance is ever gonna be the same. It has that same feeling. I really think that's what's added to the longevity of the musical. So they do the whole song, they go, this is a show about death, bam! And then everybody instantly up on their feet, screaming, yelling, confetti, throwing babies. It was just, it was, it was really, it was less of a Broadway show and more of just a rock concert. <laughs> The best way I can say it is it's like, imagine if Star Kid was able to get a show onto Broadway. It is that same type of diehard loyalty and respect for the show. My, my friend Rio, who is on the Wait in the Wings Patreon, I think said it the best. Everyone wanted to celebrate every single person in the show. And I think they hit the nail on the head because it, it kind of leaned onto at a reunion of a giant sitcom where everybody walks out and it's just five minutes of cheering for every single person who came out and ovation after ovation after ovation for everybody. They were saying how it, it was really a celebration of the whole team because before the show started, some members of the orchestra noticed some members of the understudies in the crowd and started yelling and cheering for them too. So I don't want it to sound like it was this big funeral dirge of a closing night and lamenting that the show was going to end. Because if anything, it was the exact opposite and it was a celebration of everything that Beetlejuice had done, everything that Beetlejuice had gone through. And it was really this triumphant victory lap of how great that we finally get to say goodbye the right way. And then came the moment. If you've been following this channel for the past three years now, you know that I absolutely hate the song <laughs> Dead Mom. I hate it so much that it was consistently the number one song on my Spotify wrapped. Well, I'll be in my bedroom, wake me when I'm 20. Whoa! And I don't know if it's because it was the last time or what, but it just, it hit on a different level. And I think Elizabeth Teeter 
really left it all on the stage with that number. And it's just, it's those final, those final notes coming down the stairs and the, the ensemble is just going bum, 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 bum. The, the last Timbers move hits and I'm crying profusely. And she goes, dead bomb, bum, 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 bow. And then again, spring loaded out of the seat, everyone whooping and hollering. And I think it just hit extra hard because it, I really have to put into perspective how that song has just followed us through so much of this journey that we're on, this weird YouTube theater history preservation journey that we're on. Because when I first heard that song, I was working at a newspaper in my hometown of 5,000 people, afraid that I was going to die there <laughs> and wanting to move and actually be close to the shows that we were talking about. Seeing it there in the theater in New York City after the channel just passed 100,000 subscribers, after we've talked about so many incredible shows and it just, it really was this culmination of like, looking at where we are now, compared to where we were when the Beetlejuice doc came out. So, um, the song kicks, but on a different level, it just made me really appreciate the relationship that we have grown together as a community. Um, but yeah, the song was freaking awesome. <laughs> but I think my favorite moment of the night came at the end, the final scene where Beetlejuice makes his grand exit off the stage. So he opens the door to the netherworld, he starts walking back, and he just yells out, Goodbye, Broadway! So everyone's cheering and screaming, and then calms down, and Adam Danheiser, who plays Charles Dietz, just looks around and says, The f*** does that mean? <laughs> By the end of the night and the end of that final bow, Beetlejuice the Musical received 10 standing ovations. Behind the raucous responses from the crowd, I think what really made that last performance so special was that there were so many times where you could tell that the real person, the real actor, was transcending out of the characters. It was like each movement felt more than a stage direction and each line felt more than something from a script. It wasn't just Lydia hugging goodbye to Beetlejuice. It was Elizabeth Teeter hugging goodbye to Alex Brightman. It wasn't just Delia saying, this is the best day of my life. It was Leslie Kritzer saying, this is the best day of my life and tearing up while she said it. After the bows, director Alex Timbers came on stage and gave a pretty heartfelt speech. Uh, while Beetlejuice could have easily shuddered after our short run in Washington, or after our opening night on Broadway, or after a certain well-known producer, some lovely surprise for us in another winter run, or because of the pandemic, this musical has remarkably kept rising from the dead. And over the last 13 years, the creative pillars of this show have consistently been our writers, Anthony King, Scott Brown, and Alex, and Elizabeth. You are truly beacons of light in this world. Now, we often say that this is a show about death. That's actually really a celebration of life. And you all have given us life. Thank you. That wild, happy, enthusiastic energy made its way outside of the theater. And as I looked around at everybody, it just really put into perspective the journey that you and me have been through. We've had quite a bit of fun with Beetlejuice the Musical. We made someone sing The Music Man outside their theater. We did way too many Timbers moves. I even dressed up as Lydia and sang Dead Mom. So it's worth asking, how do we cope now that it's had its final Broadway bow? At its core, 
Beetlejuice is about one very important thing that I want you to carry with you as we enter this weird post-show world. Beetlejuice the musical is about how we combat the feeling of grief and feeling like we're invisible. And every night outside of that theater, people genuinely felt seen. Some for the first time. Was it perfect structurally? I don't know, who am I to say? But I think you have to look beyond that and see the real impact that it had on people's lives, their real lives. You know, I started seeing the show just as an actor performer. And after seeing the show, I became a costume designer. And now I fully have just changed the course of my life. And the show really has opened so many doors to me. And I could not be more thankful for it. <laughs> I, I met all of these people online, and then like today is the first time we've ever met in person, and there, I've never had any kind of fan experience like this, and it's incredible and life-changing, and I'm so happy to have met you guys. My best friend and roommate moved to the city because of this show, and you know that was a huge life-changer for me, so. I'm an artist. I've done one of the... I did a fan art, fan art for one of the for, the... for the mural. Beetlejuice means a lot to me, like a lot, a lot. It, help me figure out a little bit what I want to do for the future. And I actually got to make a cake for them for the Halloween episode, uh, the Halloween night show because I'm the winner of a Netflix show. Um, is it cake on Netflix? I'm the winner. Yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this I made it three years ago now. I spent about two months researching and putting everything together. I love the, the atmosphere, the spirit. It, it was it was something else, definitely. It just reaches a whole new new area of the unspoken. It gives the invisibles a voice. Um, I just really related to just the central character, Lydia, and just, um, you know, just the feeling of feeling invisible and different and like an outcast. And I just think the whole message is about just finding yourself. Yeah, this show came out in a crucial period in my life and transformed it for the better. That is what Beetlejuice the Musical is all about. And how cool is it? that the rest of the world now gets to experience what it was like outside of the Marriott Marquis. But we don't have to say goodbye just yet, however. Check out this video, albeit an extremely out of date one, on the first half of Beetlejuice's wild ride on Broadway.